Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake aka Tag, and today we're back again with the most reliable and best mortar deck in Clash Royale. One of my favorite things about this deck in particular is on defense, if their opponent goes in for a log on top of the Rascals, they do not kill the Thick Boy. And because the Thick Boy is still alive and thriving, you can tank for a Dark Goblin or a Goblin Gang so that Expo or Bridge Fam never locks onto anything important. This mortar deck has been viable for many years now, and I don't see any of these cards getting a nerf anytime soon. So if you're looking to pick up a mortar cycle deck or a log bait deck, this is the perfect deck to start learning today. And if you're not already, you can support me by using creator code SIRTAG. By using creator code SIRTAG in any Supercell game, I get a percentage of all money spent at no extra cost to you. It supports the channel, it allows me to spend more time on videos, and I really appreciate it. All right, guys, we're gonna go and sauce out a miner in the safe spot so he's not able to activate King Tower early on, and we're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see what we're gonna be facing. Oh, we see Knight, so it could be Graveyard with Baby Dragon, Tornado, Bar Barrel, but no, he's gonna have a Expo deck with Knight, so that is slightly less common. It's probably gonna be the variation with Rocket, Tesla, and Log, and Tornado. So, yeah, there it is. There is exactly what we were thinking. Not what we were hoping for, though. That Mortar should be able to lock right on top of the Ice Wizard and distract for quite a bit, so that's cool. We can just Log here, and then the Mortar retargets. Finishes off the Expo so we don't have to spend extra Elixir there. And we're up damage. Really, really good stuff. If we ever go in for a Goblin Gang, we don't want to drop it immediately right on top. Ooh, he's setting up for an Expo already. That's interesting. He's going to go and log this Goblin Gang 100%. That is wacky that you would do that. I don't understand, my man. I can go for Rascals here. Oh, he's just going to go all in. Okay, makes sense. I'm going to Fireball here. And we should be able to kill the Tesla. Kill the Knight. Go in for Bats. And he's going to have to go for an Ice Wizard if he wants to stop that. We deny a lot of damage, and we get a ton of damage on the left-hand side. So overall, we're reigning supreme in that situation. And he went all in. Like, he decided to eat a Goblin Gang, going for a knight to body block all of our bait carts. And the main thing is keeping the Tesla not hidden, so then the Fireball can hit it. It's not like we have Earthquake, guys. We can't hit it undercover. Go for a Dark Goblin in the back. He's going to do the exact same shenanigans. So we just want to preemptively go in for a Mortar so he's not allowed that ability. I'm going to go in for a Miner here. So he has to spend extra elixir. Yeah, he, he was like, wait, maybe uh, he drops it in the right spot. And uh, if I don't drop the knight, I could be absolutely toast. I'm going to go for a goblin gang here so we can bait out a log on the tower that's going to be healthier. So otherwise, he just eats a lot of chip damage that he can't afford to. If he drops a log, then we have rascals for free. So usually because he has rocket, he's not going to have a great matchup in this situation. Because we're going to be able to annihilate anything that he drops at the river with our, our rascals he's not able to fireball that and if he logs it then we have dark goblin to supplement us he's gonna rock it wow well we can drop mortar and that's gonna be out of range you're gonna probably try a tesla so we can go in for a goblin gang and then bats because you're gonna try to log after so we still want to predict that and make sure that we're tanking for the mortar so we can lock onto your tower so you guys saw the stage two predictions we knew that he was gonna tesla so we went for the goblin gang we knew he'd log then we went in for the next maneuver of dropping the bat so we could body block part two yeah, I want to fireball everything here. I, if we're able to go and kill the Expo really quickly and hit the Ice Wizard with the fireball, then we can get a connection a little bit easier. I want to log that so the Ice Wizard is dead so then the Mortar locks onto the tower. I think we're playing out of our mind right now to get that connection. Oh my gosh, guys. We got a connection with like zero HP. I think he's probably going to go in for the Expo. We'll see. I just want to go in for Rascals and Bats to finish off the Tesla so then he doesn't have it alive anymore. He's going to have to go for a Defensive Mortar or a Defensive Expo. <laughs> Every siege unit is mortar now in this universe. I hope that the mortar locks onto the ice wizard. We'll see. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be able to hit the ice wizard too. Awesome stuff. Let's go, baby. I wanna go in for a miner and a log here. I will be able to hit the skeletons if he drops them. We're dropping in a spot that is precarious, so he's not gonna be able to guess that with the knight as easy. He's just gonna rocket me. That's really aggressive, my man. I, I don't agree with that. I think that we can go and play really, really aggressive with our miners and fireballs and walk away with a W. Drop it in the exact same spot, so anything that is dropped near our mortar shot will just immediately die. We can cycle back to one more fireball or get the mortar to connect right here and now and walk away with a W with this mortar. Let's go, baby! GG, well played, and peace out, brother. I love beating Expo. It is so not fun to play against in a lot of matchups, but this deck, it's fun. This guy's gonna go for a Spear Goblin Hut. I never see that. What are those, brother? I want to go in for a miner on this side. So then the other tower isn't able to hit it. You guys see that, right? This tower on the left, right there, is not hitting the miner when we dropped it originally. So if you're defending against a furnace or a spear goblin hut or a spawner and you have to eliminate the spawner, your best bet is to always go in for the miner in a spot where both towers are not able to hit it. 
if I dropped the miner right down the middle in this position right here, then the other tower would have been able to hit it and it would have been way quicker. I'd go for bats here. And since we see poison, I'm already assuming that this is going to be a graveyard deck. I want to fireball that Electro Wizard, so maybe the bats are going to be able to kill it so I don't have to spend any extra elixir. Yeah, this is great. So he's going to graveyard. We'll see if he wants to poison. He's going to log so then no skeletons accumulate on us. We should be able to shut it down with ease now at this point. Okay, so you always want to go opposite lane of the graveyard player. That is the number one thing that you got to do. Graveyards and single elixir should be punished. So we're trying to go for mortar separate lane of this. So then he has to spend elixir here and here. It's just too much elixir for him to spend. So we're going to get guaranteed damage on both sides. And then he freaked out. And he's like, wait, the mortar's locked on. But then also that. So uh, yeah, he, uh, he had to deal with a, a separate split push. And that's why it's not always best to counter push with the Thick Boy and the Rascals when you want to go and trade opposite lane anyway and want to make your opponent to spend way more elixir than they were traditionally would anyway. So yeah, we got him to spend more elixir. We spread him thin. And he dropped a Spear Goblin Hut. He's dropped guards and delayed more time that he wasn't able to go in for a graveyard and now his counter push everything that he defends with is going into the side that he doesn't have his damage so that's really bad for him he could poison this too and if he poisons that means he can't graveyard he can't graveyard for another four cards until he's back to poison so i am free to play passive and safe right now and i don't have to care because usually in most situations when they uh have a spot where they have poison you have to play aggressive so then they can't go for a graveyard because they will graveyard you, inevitably. But if they can't graveyard me, I can play passive, I can chill, I can relax, I can do whatever I want in this game. So I can go in for miners, and I can get at 10 elixir. It's A-OK. -okay. So I want him to poison this again. I really do, because we're gradually getting better elixir trades than him. The, the one thing that is bad for us is if he graveyards me. It's the one thing I don't want to see. Oh, really good fireball value. Let's snag that, hit both the spear goblins. We want to go in for a dark goblin here, so we're going to be able to kill the Pekka as quickly as possible. I'm going to go for a Miner, so then he has to spend Elixir on that, and then maybe he doesn't go in for a Graveyard. So we're trying to keep him at a very low Elixir threshold. So we're just going to keep up the aggression here. And a lot of people are like, oh, don't drop things until you're at 10 Elixir. But against Graveyard with this deck, you are noticing how often I'm dropping cards when I'm not at 10 Elixir. My Miner, I'm at little to none Elixir. And I'm going in for the Miner here, because I need to keep up the aggression. I need him not to be able to go in at 10 Elixir and go in for a Graveyard Poison on us. I also have to go for Rascals, and I have to go for a Log, just so the Skeletons and the Spear Goblin die. Spear Goblin is locked onto my tower, man. I'm going to go in for a Gang Gang. I can go in for Bats here, just to eliminate the Mega Minion. He's going to go for Electro that we don't have to worry about, because it's damaging the other tower. That doesn't matter. We're going to Miner in the back. He's actually going to go in for a Spear Goblin Hut and predict it. Wow. That was insanely well played on his end. We want to go for a Fireball here, just to get more Chip, and we need to cycle back to another Fireball. He's probably going to drop something at the river, so we're going to try to Body Block it. He's going to go in for a graveyard and immediately poison. We got to go in for a gang gang. We got to go in for just a log and bats, I believe. And then we should be fine. Uh, yeah, if we drop the bats here and then the, the poison runs out and we kill the skeletons, we're fine. Yeah, you just had to time it. So then the skeletons, we're going to die to the bats. And the poison does not hit the bats if you time it just in the last tick. GG and well played, man. Very good timing for us with those bats, and we were able to finish off the two skeletons, so he wasn't able to get us into range that he would be able to log us. GG, and well played, man. We're gonna go for a miner to open up this game. We're gonna see what's up, we're gonna see what's good. This guy is gonna go in for a mega minion, so as soon as we see that, we're gonna think it's gonna be a beatdown deck, whether it's gonna be a golem deck or a giant deck. They usually have multiple spells, so it's our best interest to go in for a goblin gang split so we don't give him too much value. Then we can follow up with a bat surround on the baby dragon. And this dude is going to go for a lightning on a dark goblin? What the heck, my man? Okay, this is really good because we're able to go for a mortar, pull back the mega minion and the baby dragon so he doesn't get that much value with it. And then, of course, he has to go in for a night witch, which he misses and allows the mortar to connect to the tower with. So he is down a lot of elixir. And by a lot, I mean a considerable three or four right now. So we can go for a miner. And this will be difficult for him to defend because he's not going to be able to stop everything. Yeah, look at that, man. Two hits from Thick Boy. And now we can go in for a Goblin Gang. He's going to try to go in for more spam. This guy is so savage. He is so aggressive. So incredibly feisty here. He's going to go in for a Zap as well, but we can shut it all down. Have the Dark Goblin finish off the Baby Dragon without any damage on our tower. And we get great counter push too because that's going to get damage unless he responds to it. That's going to get like five hits, dude. And that is 600 damage around. Oh my gosh, that is crazy, crazy stuff, man. Well, not 600, it was 400, but you know, I can have dreams, I can have aspirations. We can go for a log here. We'll see what he does. He's probably going to go for a golem. Yep, 
Golem as we anticipated. So when they go for Golem, and you know that they have a tendency to Lightning, your best bet is just to go for your Mortar, go for your Rascals off to the side, and any cards that they support their Golem with, go right into the Rascals. You want to separate them as quickly as possible. So we'll see what he does. See if he wants to spam with it. I think he might just Lightning. He's going to try to get chip damage with the Lightning, and that's generally not a good decision. It's a lot of Elixir to cast. We can Miner and go in for Bats here. Go in for a Mortar on offense in the other lane if we want. We want to separate all of his uh, all of his Elixir, right? So he just dropped a Zap. He dropped Guards. That's going to be five Elixir that he can't support here. And we can go for a Miner. We can go for a Dark Goblin. We can go for Goblin Gang. Go for Bats. Now that Mortar is definitely going to lock onto the tower, and we should be able to cycle back to another one. So I'm very happy about this. Oh, it's not going to lock onto the tower immediately. It's going to wait for the, uh, the Mega Minion to get close, but... Still really, really good for us. I can go for a bat surround here and finish off the baby dragon. As long as the baby dragon dies, we're in a great spot. I need to go in for a gang gang. And we're going to go and cycle our mortar early. We're going to try to cycle back to two of them, as I said before. It's really important to try to do that. So if I fireball or drop rascals, that's cool because then the bats will die really quickly. And uh, yeah, we'll just be able to stop this. If I knock the golem away so it doesn't get death damage on our tower, that's ideal. And we can start to go in for a Mortar. We can go for a Miner. He's going to spend Elixir to try to stop this Mortar. Obviously, we can go and pull back his Mini Pekka here and get the connection with our Mortar, I believe. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of value for us if the Mortar connects to the Tower, which it should. He's going to go for a Zap, so he's really committed to this defense. He is so committed. If we're able to get the Mortar to connect to the Tower again, we will be able to walk away with a victory. Cycle in our Fireball so we can get back to it a little bit quicker before our Log. And yeah, we just need one more fireball and we will win the game. He's going to lightning. It doesn't matter. GG. Well played and peace out, dude. So yeah, Psycho and Mortars on defense is really, really clutch. Not going opposite lane with the Mortar. So this guy's going to go in for a Bandit and an Ice Golem. So I'm thinking that this guy might actually have a Bridge Spam deck. Or he could have a Three Musketeer deck with Royal Hogs. So it's going to be one or the other. Maybe the Bandit might... Okay, the Bandit's not going to give him any extra value. We're fine. See if he gives us fireball value here or nah. Go for bats off to the side, so then our Dark Goblin doesn't get pulverized immediately. Go for a Miner. And I think we want to go for Rascals. So yeah, it's going to be Royal Hogs, Three Musketeers from the looks of things. It's going to have Zap as well. So yeah, this is definitely going to be the variation that I love playing. He spent a lot of Elixir. We can go for a Mortar, and we still have Rascals. He doesn't have any way of killing those, right? He's going to Bomb Tire. That's fine. That's totally acceptable. Because you're not able to kill the Rascals with that. And you're going to have to spend even more Elixir with a uh, Magic Archer. And then the Thick Boy is getting targeted. So then the Rascals lock onto your tower. And that's just an all-around great Elixir trade for me. So I can log and then I can go for Bats. And I can get chip damage that way. Or I can log and then I can go for Goblin Gang. And he's going to zap it probably. So we want to go in for a Miner. So then the Stab Goblin stay alive. Oh, he didn't zap it. Yeah, he's a good player. He knew that. So a lesser player would have zapped and then the Stab Goblin survive and he would have had a miserable interaction then. I'm going to go for Rascals here right on top of the Bandit so then the Bandit doesn't dash towards our tower. And this guy is playing really well. I think he's probably going to try to go in for Royal Hogs after he cleans this up. But we did get a lot of damage with the Rascals early on so I feel like we're in a favorable situation. He will zap this. Definitely is going to zap this. I'm going to go in for a Log here and I want a Fireball. just want to be able to Fireball the Dark Prince too so... Missed one of them because I had to hit the Dark Prince. Feels bad, man. Okay. We're not in the best spot anymore, but he doesn't have a big spell, so I can go in for a Mortar here, and I can stack Mortars. So even if you find yourself in a pretty bad situation, if they don't have a big spell, you can just stack Mortars and be A-OK. -okay. So I'll show you guys how it's done. We're going to go in for our first Mortar. We're going to keep it alive in double Elixir. We're going to try to get a Log real quick when he decides to spam us really aggressively. Otherwise, we would just want to Fireball the Magic Archer, so it's out of sight, out of mind. Doesn't give him any more uh, chip value. We can log this all back, keep all of our bait cards alive, knowing that he's going to go in for either a Dark Prince or a Bomb Tower. We want to go for our Miner, so then the splash damage is going to be dispersed. And look at the Dark Goblin, man. That damage per second is unheard of. It's unprecedented. That's why I like Dark Goblin opposed to Spear Goblins. You guys were wondering, hey, why do you run Dark Goblin over Spear Goblins? That was your answer. It evaporated everything he dropped in a matter of seconds. And as a result, we were able to come through and take a tower in a situation that we otherwise would not be able to make happen, man. We wouldn't have been able to win this game if uh, we didn't have this exact deck. We're going to fireball right here, get the miner right on top of the tower, 
and all we have to do is cycle back to a log. Log does 84, if you guys didn't know that already. We're dropping our cards off to the side so the Magic Archer can't connect and somehow allow him to get, like, five hits on our tower. It wouldn't have been possible, but better play safe than sorry. GG, well played, and peace out, man. We're going for a Dark Goblin to make sure that Ice Spirit does not connect to our tower, and as soon as we see Ice Spirit and Skeletons, I feel like we could just be playing against an Expo or... Yeah, okay. Before I even finish my sentence, he goes in for the Expo. I was going to say, Expo or 2.6 as per usual as soon as we see those Fast Cycle cards... I can fireball the expo here, so that's really cool. I'm going to get a ton of chip damage early on, and we identify exactly what he has. He's going to have the knight variation, so this makes me think that he could be packing maybe rocket. A lot of times when they have knight, they're not going to have rocket. Could have ice wizard as well. We'll have to wait and see. No, he's going to have musketeer. Okay, so he's going to have a very different variation of expo than I'm used to seeing. But he's going to have a fast cycle nonetheless. I do want to go and protect the Dark Goblin here because the Musketeer would lock onto it. He doesn't have log in cycle, so I can line up as much as I want because he did, I just logged there. So, really, really good for us because he uh, just used his Knight. He doesn't have Archers. He's only going to have Musketeer. He's going to have a pretty high Elixir Threshold to deal with these Bats and Miner right now. Like, the Ice Spirit has to be perfectly timed or some of those Ice Spirit... Yeah, I, I guess, like, sometimes Ice Spirits just don't hit all of the Bats. He was able to get that to happen, though. So very well played on his end. I don't like dropping my Goblin Gang in a spot that he can predict. Yep. That's why we drop it off to the side every single time when it's a very obvious Goblin Gang. When they're a good player, they're going to go in for that log right on top of the Miner. So if you have a feeling that they're going to do that, you need to go and drop your Goblin Gang right down the middle opposed to dropping it right on top of the Muskie instead of getting greedy. So that's going to get too close. Should get a ton of damage from that. Remember, he had just went in for a log, so we can go for Rascals. He might Fireball. And that's a free miner for us if he fireballs the rascal because that's a lot of elixir. Knight plus fireball. Seven elixir for rascals. That's a negative two. And damage on the tower that's going to be healthier for us. So overall, a really good transaction. Unfortunately, he's catching it with Skeleton's Ice Spirit every single time. So that is a really good play for him. I can fireball this and then that will be able to kill the musky. Unfortunately, we don't get any damage with the rascals, but overall, it's fine. We can go for a log for some passive value. We can go in for a goblin gang here. We know he's going to probably log it. If not, then that's okay as well can wait for that to die and then we can go in for a miner so the miner is going to be the target for the expo then we can rascals here and we can fireball the musketeer and the expo at the same time really really clutch so notice how i did that right i always had something in cycle for the expo and we can log this and make sure that uh, he doesn't get any damage we prevent it when we drop our mortars we're dropping it off to the side so he can't hit it with a fireball he can't hit the tower that he wants He's going to log this, but then the Dark Goblin locks on, so we're fine. Dark Goblin's going to put that in vicinity that we don't have to worry about it anymore. Then we can Miner and Bats. Using Dark Goblin on defense against Expo was just so useful, man. A lot of times they aren't able to log it in time, and if they do log it, then their Rascals are going to give you way too much value. I can Fireball for more chip damage. We know what he's going to do, right? He's going to have to go in for an Expo hot and heavy here, and if our Mortar is just able to defend, we'll walk with a W. GG, well played. We cycle to a Fireball and capture the win. So guys, Dark Goblin off to the side if you have a tank for it, and make sure you drop your mortars in the middle, but make sure that they can't hit it with the fireball and the tower.